Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Today is February 7th, and my name is Colleen Magnus, and you will be creating with Colleen today. So I am in Chesapeake, Virginia, and I have to say it is a gorgeous day today. We have a chilly week, which is okay, because I'm originally from Chicago, so I don't mind the chill. Um, it's been in the 40s, and it is February. So I am still holding out for some snow, um, keeping my fingers crossed, usually on the East Coast here. We are right on the coast, so we get the rain. But I do hope it snows, because we have had some of our best snowstorms in March. Um, but if it's not here by the first week in March, bring on spring. We're just going to have to wait and hope for next year. So today, I am going to be sharing some Valentine's Day treat with, treats with you. <clears throat> I've been a demonstrator for over 22 years, and the fun thing about it is, through the years, you have made some really fun things that maybe some people have forgotten. So that's what I want to refresh your memory. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had a cold <clears throat> about a week and a half ago, so I have my trusty uh, cough drops. Hope a tickle doesn't take me down during this time. But through the years, again, we have had some fun things. And um, I really like these treats, and I was blessed because I was thinking today was uh, thank um, Thanksgiving. I was thinking today was Valentine's Day. And, um, oh my gosh, when I realized it wasn't, I still had another week. That is just like a gift from above. It's like, oh! Time goes so quick anyways. And so to realize I'm actually ahead of the game, I love that. It doesn't always happen that way. <clears throat> so it's been a busy week, but a good week. Um, yesterday, I had a Celebrate and Create event with my team. I do that with my dear friend, Tanya Reed. And we do it by Zoom and we create together. So it was fun being with everybody. Today, of course, is my life. Tomorrow, I'm going to my dad's nursing home and we are going to make Valentine's Day cards. They absolutely love Valentine's and uh, so it'll be fun creating with them. Friday, I'll be at the beach as a vendor for a crop all day. And then Saturday, I get to uh, stamp with the stamp club that has been with me for almost the 22 years. I mean, I signed up in October um, 2001 and we started stamping in January of 2022. So that's the best thing about what I do is the people. And I just love being with people. And these ladies are so very dear to me. We get together. We talk like for the first hour, catch up with everybody, see how they're doing. We open in prayer. Then we stamp. And then guess what? We go to Riginella's for lunch. So we get our pizza on. So it's a busy week, but man, is it a, it's a great week. So I hope your week is going good. I hope your day is going good. I am going to boot us up here so I could see who is on the screen with me. I'm going to turn this down and we are going to create again three Valentine's treats that I hope you like. Somebody's got a sweetheart somewhere. So here we go. Let me turn you around. Do that. Do my stand. <clears throat> All right. Oops, sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, so let me see who's here. I appreciate y'all being here with me. I really, really do. Hey, Diane. Oh, sunny and chilly Chesapeake. Yes, it is. Mary from Indiana. Judith from South Carolina. Steph and Gwen are here. Brent is here. Hey, Kay, you're here. Jolene is here. Right on. Love Jolene. She's such a sweetheart. Gonna get you stamping, Jolene. And then uh, Jody is here also. So anyways, this is what we did last week. Let me see if I can even that out a little bit here. Okay. This is what we did last week. So this, um, you know what? Oh my goodness, I can't believe I've done that. I don't have my lights on. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Do you think I need them? Let me at least go grab my little light. Oh my goodness. You know, you think you have all the time in the world, and then you forget something. <clears throat> So if y'all think the lighting's okay, I'm just going to put this one on and we're going to call it a day. One thing for me is, uh, you know, I don't require perfection, which is probably a good thing. In fact, I know it's a good thing. As long as we create and have fun, that's what counts. So this card, <clears throat> I made this last week, so I have a video on it. And uh, just a cute Valentine's card. Love you more. They're always saying that. Love you more. No, I love you more. No, I love you more. So you can see how this was made last week, but I'm using the same paper. And this paper has definitely saved me. 
It is called Most Adored. And you can get this paper free during celebration, which by the way, celebration ends on the 29th. <clears throat> so we don't have a lot of time. But I have loved this paper. And it was great for Valentine's too. What's nice is it's a gold foil on one side. So you can sponge it and brayer it and make it any color you want. But then you have the beautiful pinks and reds. Perfect time of the year. Now, they also came out with second releases for Celebration, which I'll talk to you about after the video. And I have some Celebration samples that I'm going to share with you because we've really had some good cards and uh, good projects along the way. So let me put this up. Oh, man, we have Germany in the house. We have England. Oh, I always think that is so cool. Thank you, thank you for joining. The first treat I'm going to teach you how to make was years ago, we used to do a triangle box and you can make them any size that you want. So, and so I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this one. And then we're gonna do a sour cream treat and then a triangle box with a window. So for this one here, what you're gonna need is the four by eight inches of the Most Adored Designer Series paper. This, I love this satin ribbon because you can use it in white and gold as it is, or you can color it with your blends, which I'll show you how to do. This is about a 12 inch piece of the satin etched ribbon. And then here you have the two by six piece of the most adorned paper with the hearts. And I cut them with the hot air balloon dies. So this is, eventually I'm gonna use it as a hot air balloon. Right now it's my Valentine set. Um, but here's the hot air balloon set. And then I love this heart shaped die in here. And of course that could be made into an, a hot air balloon too. So what I did is by the magic of television, I took this two by six inch strip and I've already cut out. I'm gonna show you how to do a little bit of cutting later, but I did cut out my three hearts. So I have those there. And for this here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to score it. So I will take, we simply scored, put these aside here. And the trick when doing a triangle box, no matter what size, is whatever you have across the top, you double down the bottom. So since that is four inches, I'm gonna make it, it's eight inches long. So I'm just gonna take it and score it at four. You're gonna score it right in half. And with designer paper, since it's a thinner type paper, use the fat end of your stylus. The small end is great for cardstock because it's heavier, but you want to use the fatter ball on your stylus, four inches, and just lightly come down. So I basically just scored that in half. <clears throat> so now what you're going to do, you're going to do the triangle. So from the center down, let me get my ruler right here. And sometimes to see it easier, I like to put like a little pen mark, but I don't want it on the outside. So it really doesn't matter which way you're gonna do this. So I'm just gonna find my center. Again, that was four inches. And actually, you know what? I could probably use a pencil and do better because that is hard to see on that side. Let me go get my pencil. Everything is right here in the stamp room. And then this way I can erase that if I want to. So I've got four inches here. I'm just gonna mark two, flip it over, do the same thing here, two inches. And then I can even, if I want, this is where I'm gonna be scoring two, is on that fold line right there. So with my ruler and my stylus, I'm gonna put my ruler on the middle there, that two inch mark, Come on down, and then I'm gonna do the same right here, from that mark to that corner. All right, and just note to self, I just realized I'm not taking my home phone out of the stamp room, so chances are somebody will call, so I'll just apologize now. You know how that goes. And then from here, down to that mark. And I'm scoring it because it's going to help me get that fold just right. <clears throat> hey, Peggy. 
but you popped in. So now that I have those, I can just quickly erase my little pencil marks. And they'll never know. Isn't that awesome? So for this, I can fold this in half on that four inch mark, give a crease with my bone folder, and then I can take this here, you could see where that goes to there, and then on this side, and that right there. and then the other side also. Let me get that. And then right here. So with that, when I put it together, I'll pull this piece out. Yeah, I got that one there. That is going to make my triangle box and I'll be honest with you now I feel like I'm fumbling around with these cards are mainly what I do 3d items are great um, but it's slightly out of my elephant element not a whole lot um, and then when I do the smaller box you'll see teeny tiny is hard on me too but it's okay so what I'm gonna do is I'll open this up and I want to stamp on here but I want it to be flat so I can kind of bend those back because I don't want this paper up when I put my ink pad down so I'm going to use the perennial postage stamp set and there's a great saying in there which would be perfect for this you are loved beyond measure <clears throat> so I'll take my memento black let me see and I'll just take this make sure it's inked up good mm, sorry guys I got to pull that down so I could see it and there you go. You are loved beyond measure. So Evelyn said she does the scoring with the paper trimmer. I do too sometimes, Evelyn, and then sometimes I use my um, Simply Scored. I can definitely show you both uh, during this, this video. So since I have that there, I now have to, well, let's go ahead and put it together. I'm going to, um, take my ribbon and I want to color this ribbon. As I was saying, the nice thing is when you use a blend, you can add color to any non-porous surface. So that could be an embellishment, that could be a ribbon, and that's what I'm going to do. So if you have any kind of a vanilla or a white ribbon, you always want that in your Stampin' Arsenal <clears throat> because then you can make any color you want as long as you have your blend. So I'm going to try the light red first. We'll see. Now with the Stampin' Blends, they're an alcohol marker, so you really need to be careful. Don't leave this out with your caps off because it'll evaporate. And on your marker, you have a small tip, and that is, of course, the small tip. And these are great for coloring and blending. They come two to a pack with a light red and a dark red or whatever the colors are. On this side, you see the broad end, and that is exactly what that is. So I'm just going to take it and lay it on its side and I'm just going to go down just kind of get in the edge in fact you know what let me just pull this and I'm going to just pull the ribbon and make it even easier go down 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 I want to get the inside too because that'll give it a little bit of a prettier pink in the middle and then I'll flip it over and do the same just go down the edge here Lay it on its side, you're not pushing hard, but you're just gonna bring that down, and guess what? I've got Valentine's ribbon now. Isn't that cool? So again, it'll dry on a non-porous surface, and now I have a very pretty red ribbon to go with my box. So I'm gonna take a hole punch, and I want, since this is a front, I want the back side to go in first, so I get a nice edge on the front. Now I'm just gonna hold this together here. And I will punch. Okay. And then I'll do the same on this side. 
Again, that's my front. Put this in the center here. Come on now, oh my goodness, it's a shaky day. There we go. And I have that. Now I had to run up to the store um, and get some conversation hearts. So what I'm gonna do when I fill this is, so again, I want the front on the outside. So I put my ribbon through the front first and then I'll put it through the inside on the right. Then I'll put it through the inside on the left. And then that's when I'll put it through the front here. Let's see if I can get all the way through and then put my candy in. So when I have my ribbon, just straighten it up. This is what it would look like just with the box. Like so. And then for this side here, I can just open this up, pour some of these in here. Right, let me change that. I've never poured left hand. <clears throat> Put some conversation hearts in. Looks like too many. I'll have to take a couple out to eat them. I don't want them to go to waste. And then, oh my goodness, that is a lot. <laughs> There we go. Get them up from the bottom. There we go. Jolene, it's usually easier than this, so just hang with me, baby. Hang with me. There we go. So I have my triangle box. And keep in mind, anytime you get a pattern like this, I always say it's like a good black cocktail dress. You can wear it anywhere. So when you're looking at these boxes, think birthday, think shower, think wedding, um, especially the smaller one I'm gonna show you with the um, little circle, the window in it. You know, these are all great for any occasion. So here I have, let me get my scissors, trim up a little bit. I have my ribbon. There we go. And now I'm gonna do the heart for the front. So for my heart, I know you were saying um, to use the other scoring, we have a cutter with a score on it, and I'll show you that when I do the small box. But for this one, I do like the lines because I can see it. This is our Simply Score tool. And I even took, at one point, I took like a pencil and just kind of went on the inside of the line so it's easier for me to see it on both sides. So I'm just going to take, and I'm gonna go light, but I am gonna use this smaller edge here but I'm going on the top of the heart to the bottom, and I'm just gonna give this a score because it'll make folding it in half much easier. And I'm gonna do these on all three hearts. One, two, three. Okay. So let me check this. Someone had a question here. Let me go check my comments. Um, let me see. Hello from Pennsylvania, Rebecca. Um, oh, I know. Evelyn, how did we ever live without our blending pens? They bring color to everything. Okay, so Evelyn wants to know what the conversation hearts are. They are actually, Brock's makes a candy every year, and they're these little conversation hearts, and they were always great as a kid. One, they're kind of tasty as they are, but two, they have like little conversations on here like Cutie, Rockstar, BFF, Call Me. Um, but I gotta tell you, either I got a bum pack or Brox is dropping the ball because when I was looking at these, they're really not stamped all that great. I mean, when we were kids, they were perfect. So, but you could see some of them. I'm picking out the, the better ones, but you can see how they're so light. Real Love, Gal Pal, Cutie. Let me get another one. There's another Cutie. These are the yellow ones, they're my favorite. So anyways, that's what a conversation heart is. It's heart candies with words on it. I guess you can have a conversation. So now to do my heart, I'm gonna fold all my hearts in half. It's one, two, and this is how you make a 3D heart. So now that I have those, I'm gonna take my liquid glue 
And um, I am going to just put a very fine line here coming up the center. I'll put this one on top. And you can actually, since that glue's in the center, <clears throat> you can do this where they're flat. And then we're going to bring those up. One in the center here. And y'all know I love my green liquid Tombow glue. It's great stuff. You do have to give it just a second. Um, yes, we do need to send Evelyn a bag. Apparently they don't have them where you're at, Evelyn. Hmm. I'll try to get a good bag. I'll look at the hearts next time and make sure that the conversation is nice and clear on it. And then when you have this, you just kind of have to play with it. I'm going to pull the first heart up like so. And then I have the next heart. Let me lick my fingers here. And this one comes up. And basically, as you do play with these, these two always want to hang out together. I'll crease this one more time. The top one I really creased really good. And that's how you make your 3D heart, like that. So I'm just going to take it on the back, put some liquid glue on here. And then when I put that on the top, that will create your first Halloween treat. So see what's great about this video is by the time I get done, I'll have three already done. So this is, let me get them out of the bottom there. That is your first heart with your colored ribbon with the blends. And then using that hot air balloon, those dies to make a 3D heart. And then you are loved beyond measure. So again, keep in mind any of these uh, treats, however you make them, great for your your mailman, for your co-workers, for your teachers, for all kinds of people. So that there, that's our first treat. So that's your triangle box. Now our next treat, I haven't made this in years. Um, this was always a lot of fun. Believe it or not, it's a sour cream container. So it only takes a four by eight inch piece of the most adorned designer series paper. And I'm going to use the tear and tape. So the tear and tape is great for doing 3D items. Oh, uh, she says the box is cute enough. She'll find some sweets to put in there. Yes, and I was even thinking like, do y'all remember the, um, what are those, the little hearts that were cinnamony um, candied hearts? I tried looking for them today. Red Hots, I think it was Red Hots, um, but I didn't see them at the store. So this here is, a sour cream container. So this was my little um, trial one that I did because it has been a while since I've done them. And this reminds me of, do y'all remember? I don't think they have it anymore. Wendy's <clears throat> had a great taco salad. I wish they did have it. I don't know if they do or not. And it always had this sour cream container. And man, you can bet I squeezed every bit of it out there to go on that salad. It was good. But there again, you can put anything you want in here. So with this, very simple, four by eight inches, that free most adorned paper. And you want to put your sticky strip on the long sides. So this is kind of like a paper tape. And what's nice is you can tear it. So I'm gonna put it on that long side. I'll put it on here. Tear that. Come down and then on one of the short sides. So let me use that to really get it down. Because what I'll do is I'll pull this paper backing off. All right, and the other thing you could do to kind of make it a little more flexible is you can take your bone folder and just kind of like a curling paper. See how I'm just kind of coming around? And then this way it makes it more flexible when you're gonna fold it. So what I'll do is I will take my paper here. I'm gonna pull that strip off, 
throw it on the floor. I will take this one off. Get over here. Let's use your nail. So it is a little tricky sometimes. That's why a sharp object usually works pretty well. When you do, I kind of come down it just a little bit. I think this is too sharp. So I will pull this up. There we go. And with the sticky part being here, I'm gonna overlap it so that it goes on the edge here. Like that, oh goodness. So I'll just put it like such. I promise when y'all do this, it'll be look much easier. I think it's because Jolene's watching. It's the first time. But I know not to be nervous with her because she's the most wonderful down-to-earth person I know. We serve in the cancer ministry together. And um, she is a blessing to everyone she meets, I'm telling you now. So I have kind of like a cylinder. So with my seam here, I am going to squeeze this shut. like that. And then I can put my hearts in there. Like so, now this is gonna be a big one, so I gotta put extra hearts in there. And then I will just squeeze this, and that comes together. So this is the fat one, the Mamba Jamba one. So if you wanted it smaller, you could just make it a little bit smaller. This was um, four by eight. You probably, four by six is what I believe I did the other one with. So that would work well too. In fact, I think it works a little better. So when you have your piece here, I'm going to, actually one of the things I'm gonna do, we had years ago, when I first started stamping, it was called a crimper. And this was like my first power tool. Honestly, I mean, I used to, you could take a piece of paper and run it through here, and I was like, rrr, 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 rrr. I just loved it. And it crimped it like corrugated cardboard. So if you want, you can take this in here, and hold it there, and you could just give it a little crimp, and then it definitely looks like, here we go. It's definitely crimped like the other one. And then this side here. Right across. So here you have more of a squared sour cream container. Um, we're gonna roll with it because that's all you could do when you're live. But I think I like the other size much better. But all the same, it's a container. I'm gonna put my hole here. And then I'll make a tag. Let me set that aside. So for the tags, I am using a couple things here. This is a great bundle. This is called Something Fancy. So with this, um, you have these dies. And it's a great set because it's a lot of words that are in here. And with the words, they have the dies and you can make a tag, which I absolutely love. So these are some of the tags that I've made, I've cut out of the paper. And then you have, of course, your words. So they fit into the shapes. So I'm gonna show you how to cut the tag with that little shape inside of it. You're gonna take out, and it works for both this one and this one also. But I'm gonna take that tag, and I think I wanna do the, I like this little flower piece here. So it's actually gonna cut that in the top. So what I'll do is I have just a scrap piece of paper. I'm gonna put my die on here and I'm gonna put that right in the middle. I can do them both at the same time. Now you wanna make sure that one does not overlap the other. So I'm just gonna take a piece of washi tape. Oh my goodness, where's the end? Y'all, This the struggle is real today. There we go, there we go. And I like to put it on my jeans so it's not so sticky that it's gonna tear the paper when I pull it up. 
but I'm just going to actually tape the two there so that that doesn't move. Then I'm going to get my die cutting machine. Y'all know I love that. Evelyn was saying she didn't know how we created without blends. I don't know how we ever created without our die cutting machine. So I've got the machine here. I'll put the base plate number one down along with the little thin adapter plate, my acrylic plate. Then that's when I'm gonna slide this in here and then my other acrylic plate on top. And you just wanna make sure you're going through evenly. Just through nice and smooth. And then when I take it out, I've got that cute little tag. So that's how you can cut the different tops in here when you make them. So you have different ones. You have the flowers. You have this one, which is like a little leaves coming off. And then you have your teardrop. You have that. So I'm going to be honest with you. No, we're going to go with it. I do not like this size. I definitely like this size better. So do a four by six when you're doing this. But we'll just do our tag. It fits the tag nicely. So I've got my tag here out of the designer paper already cut. I already cut one of these little pieces from there also. And I am going to come in with some flirty flamingo. Good. Rebecca has her crimping tool also. I love mine. Um, and again, I just felt like Danny had all these power tools out in the garage. This was mine. I loved it. So here I am going to, which way do I want to do this? But up at the top, and I always tell people, when you have writing that's like definitely horizontal and then fancy, go with the horizontal when you're eyeing it on your piece of paper. This way you can get that straight. All right, let me see here. Let me take that one. So nothing nothing fancy just love so i stamped that on the flirty flamingo and one of the things you could do to get a little bit of an edge around here so it stands out on the red is just take your edges and stick them in your pad and just push down a little bit like that see how it's like making an edge but i didn't have to use another piece of cardstock to get that look i'm just using my ink And there I have an edged tag. Easy peasy. So I'm just going to take this. I think I'll put it on with a dimensional. There we go. Let's get some little ones. Like so. And then uh, we'll peel this off. I only put them on the one side because I'm going to let this hang off a little bit. Like that. And then I didn't have the country heart punch, but my friend Tanya did. So last night when I was at her house, I decided to punch a couple of these. And oh my goodness, I have these sleeves on that are just throwing everything on the table. They're all frilly. I don't know who I was dressing up for today. Okay, so there I have my heart. And let's take what I want to use here. I think I'm going to use just our standard good old rhinestones. You got to love the rhinestones. And I will just take one of these, put it in the top, because you do have to have a little bit of bling. And then that's my tag. Again, using um, the uh, Something Fancy bundle, which is a great bundle. And then I'll just take the ribbon as gold. doesn't have to do anything too fancy there. Put it through my tag, put it through the top here. And then I can just tie this. And y'all know normally when I tie, I put it in my lap and it makes it a lot easier, but we'll see how this can go. And let me put it in my lap, hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. Here, got it like that. 
There we go. And then I just kind of pull it and then I pull the little bow pieces to make it tight in the way I want it. So that is your, your other treat or such as that. You can see how it's a lot wider. So if you want to put more in it, make it four by eight. If you want it to look like the real sour cream container, four by six. That's number two. And now for your third one, let me see. Yes, Evelyn, old tools are sometimes very useful. Uh, you've been storing yours for 30 years. I have been storing them for 22 years. You know, my husband recently retired, and one of the pleasures he has had is to be able to go through his garage and sort and purge and organize. And I'm so jealous because I think, oh, what I would love to have like that amount of time in the stamp room. Because trust me, things have collected. But there are those tools I just won't get rid of. You know, they're great tools to have. So here, this was just my little prototype. But see how I've got the little conversation hearts in here? Now this size, I really think, is great if you were gonna do wedding treats or shower treats. Um, again, you know, that's the bigger one, and that's fine, but just a little something cute. You could do this out of your wedding colors and just have a little tag, Mr. and Mrs., or the date, whatever you want, or again, for a baby shower. So what I'll do here, now this, what you're gonna need is a three by six, most adored, and I scored it, I'll score it at the three and then do the triangles again. Now it was easier to see it in the red cardstock, so hopefully it'll show up pretty good here because I wanted to do it with the designer paper hearts. Here I have a 12 inch piece of the black and vanilla large check ribbon. Now you won't find this in a catalog, you'll find that on the online exclusives because that was a carryover from the um, holiday, the past catalog that we just finished. And then here, Always hard to keep up with, but this is a window sheet. We sell 12 by 12 window sheets and they are great for creating lots of techniques and cards you can do. But this is two and a half by two and three quarters. I'm gonna put that on the laptop so that I don't, don't lose that. Okay. So I still think, I'll be honest with you, this is what we were talking about for the other scoring uh, blade. This is our paper cutter. And you have the dark one as a cutting blade, the light one as a scoring blade. And so we'll see, let's score with that. Someone wanted to see it. So with this being three by six, um, I'm gonna put it, I wanna score it in half, so I put it on my three inch mark. Always make sure you're flush at the top so that you get a nice even score. Always make sure you have the scoring blade and not the cutting blade. Otherwise you'll be going back to square one. So here, when I have that, so you could see where it's scored. So now I'll put my little pencil marks on here. You find my ruler. All right, how do you lose stuff when you're sitting right here? Happens all the time. All right, but anyway, so let's do this. I know that's three inches. Let's use our scoring blade. I put it at one and a half. And then I know that's my center, turn around, who needs a ruler, right? I do, I was a drafter for many, many decades. But this works too. And then I got my pencil mark. So now that I'm doing this, kind of like, I think Evelyn, you were the one who was saying it, it actually might even be easier because I can see where I'm at. So this is my center, that's my top. I'm gonna put this down, give a nice score. Do just the opposite here. I have got from this to here, so I can see it right in that track. Yeah, this does work well. And then I'll do the same going all the way around. Need to be a little lighter handed because I can see where it might make the um, designer paper there a little bit thin. And then from here to there. Okay. So then when I take this out and I score everything. Oh, <laughs> Evelyn wants me to send Danny to her house to do the organization. 
I tell I don't think we need Danny. I think we need time, Evelyn, because we know what we value. He might be like, oh, you don't need this. You don't need this. And we'll be like, oh, yes, we do. But I tell you, you'd probably get rid of a lot more stuff if Danny organized um, instead of ourselves. I do believe that. But I t his garage looks amazing right now. He has one wall. It's like a vintage wall, but it's it's so much history. He has old tools of his father's. Um, he has a Falstaff beer can up there from when we redid our house and he found it under the house. A baby shoe. I mean, it sounds crazy, but you know, his grandfather's tools. It's just a very cool vintage looking wall. I love it. So now that I have this, I'm gonna cut a hole in the center here. So I'm going to use the, these are great. These are the deckled circles. And you get 14 of them. I believe that is 14. Um, yeah, and just all little sizes to big sizes. So lots of things you can do. But I'm using the second to the smallest. I'm going to put it in the center here. And again, I'm going to take that washi tape. It is great to have souvenirs. But, I mean, it's just, um, he's sentimental. You know, he's definitely very sentimental. I'm going to put this in the front. You want, if you're using paper that goes a certain direction, make sure your hearts are in the right direction when you do it. Because in the back, they'll be upside down, but nobody sees that. Um, but yeah, he's sentimental. My other son, Tyler, very sentimental. His garage looks a lot like his daddy's with just different things. So I'm going to put this, it's in the center of the triangle. Got that. I'm going to grab my die cutting machine again. And I will, again, with my plates, you got your base plate, your adapter plate, clear acrylic, and then your top plate. And that goes through. I will just take this piece here. Carefully take that off. And now I have a little window in my box. So I was gonna to try to come up with some kind of measurements on how to do this window sheet. But I'll be honest with you, keep it simple. Definitely wanna keep it simple. Cause you're thinking, well, if you measure here, you can get here. You don't have a lot of space around that circle. So what I did, the two and a quarter by two and three quarters, I'm gonna lay it in here. So you kind of center it up. I wonder if you could see it easier this way. Nope. But when I center it in here, it's just kind of, just comes in a little bit from the points. So I'm gonna lay that down. Because the biggest thing is just that your circle is covered. And then I just took a Sharpie. And with the Sharpie, I just kind of um, put where that triangle line is just a little bit of a guide. And you're gonna just cut with that because nobody's gonna see this. And I just think that was much easier than trying to measure and have to worry about one more thing like that. So I'll bring my cutter back in, pull the top up, get my scoring blade out of the way. And here, just go into where those, kind of where those lines are, I'll put it down. And sometimes it's easier to start in the center. This window sheet has an edge to it. It's a little bit thick. And I think if you put it at the top and try to come down, it can pull it. So see how that did that? So just put it in the center here, your blade in the center, hold it down. Dang, y'all, today is not the good day. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jolene, I should have started with what I always say. I'll teach you what to do. I may teach you what not to do, but I promise to teach you something. Today we are learning a bunch of whatnots, but you will be a better stamper for it. So then I have this here. Again, I will just hold that piece down. I also have like a, I call it like a guillotine stamper where I pull down. I think that works sometimes too. That works pretty well. But here I have my piece cut and I'm just gonna lay it right inside here and that will cover that hole. So a little bit of liquid glue to the top here 
put them on the side. And then I could just put my window sheet inside. Wipe your fingerprints off of it first. And again, you really can't see a window sheet, but I'm gonna give that just a minute to adhere. It doesn't take too long, but it will take a little bit. Okay, I'll just give that a second. And then what I have is my window. So now I can fill it. And this is what I really wanted those little red hearts, the red hearts, those hearts for. So i put that in there. So Evelyn said, sentimental also means to remember people you love and that's important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We have some people who are like, oh, are you keeping that stuff? You know, they don't, they don't see the emotion in it. Um, when I travel, I love to travel. And when I travel, I always try to get a piece of uh, pottery. And somebody once told me we had gone to Italy and I had my pottery. I always bring my own bubble wrap and my packing tape to carry it home. And they said, well, you know, TJ Maxx has that kind of stuff. You should just go there. And I thought, why? Then I would think of TJ Maxx when I see it. I want to think of exactly where I was when I bought it. Um, you know, because it's not the stuff all the time. I think sometimes it's the experience and the, you know, memories and emotions written in that stuff. So for this top, just like before, make sure that's on the inside, that goes on the outside. I can fold these back. Put my piece in here. Do the same on this side. So now I used to buy all kinds of pottery. Now I'm really selective because you know you only have so much room. But the pieces I have do mean a lot. I love them. All right, so for this one, I have the pieces here. So I will put, what ribbon do I want to use? Oh my goodness, you should see this table. We have stuff everywhere. So I was using, here we go, all the way down there. I'm going to use the vanilla gingham. And it's probably on the floor from my sleeves. Yep, there we go. Got that 12 inch piece. So I'm going to put it through the front flap, through the center, which really is your back, through the back, again, and then through the front. I think it's easier to thread it through first and then open your pieces like so. All right. So there I have my box. I'll hold this one here. Open this. Put a couple of those, just a couple, because this one's tiny, of the conversation hearts. Oh, that'd be cute. And that, you know, it's funny, I'm like, oh, let me turn around so you can see the words. This one really doesn't have a lot of the words on there. Again, I don't know if it was a bum batch or uh, is that just the way they're making them? Or does everybody just text each other these days? Maybe that's what it is. They don't converse as much. That's sad. So here, I have that. Tie my bow. And keep in mind, you could color this ribbon too. So if I wanted to have it the pink or the red, all I had to do was take my blends like I did in the beginning of the video and voila, then you have your black in whatever color you want, check. So they're really great. So here's my little ribbon for the front. There's my conversation hearts. You can shake them all around. And then for the back, instead of just putting a tag, I think I am just going to do the, again, the nothing fancy, just love. And let me see. I'm gonna do that again. You know what? Let's do that in black. I think the black would be good since we have the black ribbon. So I'll take the memento. Nothing fancy, just love. Hmm, I'll do a better one. 
Let me get that. Didn't come out quite as dark as I wanted it there. I needed to ink it better. But if you have our markers, I just ordered the whole set again. I ordered our first, my first set of markers when I was 40. That was my big gift to myself. And fast forward two decades later, the majority of them still work. But the nice thing is, is that they coordinate with our colors. And of course, black is easy, but I could touch that up with the black. But since I have another piece, let me just stamp again. Much better. So here I have that. I'm going to come back in again to my Floaty Flamingo just to give that cool little edge so it's just not white. Just push it in a little bit at an angle on all the corners. And I have my tag. And this one. I don't know. Let me see. I don't want to do this. I mean, I could do a tag, but the tag is as big as a box. So I think I'm just going to put that with some dimensionals on the back. I think that will work. And these are the mini dimensionals, and then we have the larger ones too. So it's great to have both uh, because sometimes you need little ones. Sometimes you need big ones. Let me see. So I'll put that on the back. Nothing fancy, just love. And then there is the front. So there's your mini treat. This is your crazy big treat. It's not going to lay that way. Like that. And then here is the other tree. So again, that's a smaller one. That's a big one. But those are your um, Valentine's treats that you could do with just what you have around the house. So let me come in here and look at my um, comments and then I'm actually going to show some samples with you with the celebration. Hey Sally, good to see you. Um, Mary, I'm glad you like the boxes. Let me see. Evelyn, again, thank you. All right, well, let me show you. Um, let me show you here. Again, those are our treats. Celebration, again, with every $50 order to $100 order that you place, you get a free item. And this is only during January and February. So we have stamp sets, designer papers. Y'all are familiar with this. If not, you can go to my creatingwithcolleen.com blog. And see all the catalogs there. You can request my newsletter and you can place orders. So when you place your order for February, if it's less than $150, please use this host code. And if it's not, if it's $150 or more, you get an array of celebration items, again, for every $50 or $100 that you place, plus at starting at $150, our hostess benefits start. So you get 10% of your merchandise. So you would also get 15% free merchandise. And that's how I got this great paper free. Even I had to get place the order to get it. I couldn't just purchase it. But we have the trusty toolbox, all kinds of things. And then here, they did a second release uh, starting February 1st. I apologize that it's in black and white, but my printer is acting up and it does not want to print color. But some great selections. Uh, this is a, I love this memory notebook. This is an online exclusive, and again, I know y'all can't really see here, but this is what the flyer looks like. I sent it out in my last newsletter, but this is a $25 value, and that is a great summer book. I bought one for Zoe, and so we can uh, scrap up the pictures from the lake, and it's wonderful. But there's also two other awesome deals. They're all great, but this new 2023 New Core Colors they were the new colors that Stampin' Up! introduced into their color palette this year. That's a 38, over a $38 value that you get free with a $100 order. And up here, the delightfully eclectic 12 by 12 paper, that is 48 sheets. It's not your standard pack of designer paper. It's huge. It's on page 129, and that is a $30 value that you can get for free with a minimum $50 order. 
And then they have stamp sets and other things. So again, I send all this information to you with my newsletter. So please sign up if you have not yet. But let me share some of my, my favorite um, cards. Of course, being in a house full of men, even the dog is a guy. Um, we have here the trusty toolbox. So this is the bundle, but then you can get the coordinating designer series paper for free when you buy this bundle. So this was a lot of fun. We did this card at our bingo event and um, it's great. It's a two-step stamping, lots of fun for those guys in your life. Here's one that Lenore Whitehead did and she did use the designer paper. So the designer paper you can only get free during celebration, but our dies cut out a lot of the pieces. And I love the pegboard. Danny has one wall that's like all pegboard that he has all his wrenches and his tools on. I have to take some pictures and uh, let y'all see them. I mean, he's, he's done a great job. But this was a great, she made this little toolbox. Cute, cute, cute. And then um, this card here, this was card that I did a video on. And this features the Flight Nary Designer Series paper from Celebration. And it opens like such. So this paper is gorgeous. I really wished we had had this in our regular catalog, but I did get a couple packs um, for my own use because it's just beautiful. And even the birds, I just cut out from the designer paper. The only thing that stamp was right here. I hope your day is filled with joy. And I do. This is another Flight Nary card. And I, I created, I did a video on this. You can make it an Easter card with the free celebration set that you get. Here's another beautiful card. This is from our own Bryn Stallions. And, um, you know, again, it's just beautiful. I love when the designer paper does all the work for you. Now, this card is from Denise Jorgensen. And she used the $100 item in the back here. It's a beautiful folder that you can get. It's a folder and a stamp set. So she used that here. That's where the folder is. It's on page 14. I just love that. And then um, this card here, I believe Joyce Daniel did this card. It's just a little note. That's the dogwood set that you can get free with a $100 order. It's beautiful. This one here was gorgeous. So um, Lisa Paget did this card using the dies in the dogwood set. And then last but not least, we did a little fun card last night. This is an easel card. So this is on page, um, let me see, 12 and 13 of the Celebration catalog. So you can get the stamp set with a minimum $50 order. You can get the dies with a minimum $100 order. And those are 15 dies and they cut out all the animals, which is really cool. So this was a sloth, a little sloth that says hello. And then when you open it up, it says enjoy your day. So you can just make this to sit on your desk and uh, just start every day with a little smile on your face. So anyways, that's what I have for you today. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. I promise you it's not always this crazy. For some reason today, a few things went awry, but uh, hopefully I taught you something. I know I taught you something what not to do. Hopefully I taught you something. And again, I just hope that um, you have a wonderful day. Do something for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you next Wednesday on Valentine's Day. Um, and I just look forward to seeing you then. If you have any questions or anything that I could do for you, please let me know. Y'all take care and thanks for being in the stamp room with me. Bye-bye.